So let us go to the remaining questions now. So this is again a question from the topic of animal kingdom, uh, such a big topic and you are supposed to remember a lot of things over there, isn't it? So 6 to 15 pair of uh, gill slits will go to cyclostomata. So the yeah, cyclostomes are having this 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits. Again, it is given clearly in the textbook. Heterocecal caudal fin. So that's there with chondric thighs, isn't it? In ostic thighs, one of the very important features is this air bladder. Now, air bladder, function of air bladder is for balance, I mean buoyancy, to give it the buoyancy so that it can remain in the water, isn't it? Yeah, what is trigon? This is called as stingray. This is the other name for that. The local name for that trigon is called as stingray. The normal name for that, so this will go to this poison sting, isn't it? So option A, uh, A will go to 2 and only one option has this kind of a, yeah, arrangement. So option is 4. So this is my answer for this question. So let's go to the next question now. Topic of chemical coordination and integration, let's talk about this. What about pancreas? Pancreas, as you know, it has an exocrine part and an endocrine part. As far as your endocrine part is concerned, it is, it is for the secretion of three things. Somatostatin, glucagon, insulin. So obviously, when you are having a less amount of insulin, you are going to have this kind of a disease, that is diabetes mellitus. Okay? Now, the point is, pituitary gland will be secreting the anti-diuretic hormone which is also called by the name of vasopressin so posterior pituitary is going to synthesize this and secrete this i mean synthesis is by the hypothalamus it is stored in the posterior pituitary and that is released into the circulation so if this adh is decreased if the anti-diuretic hormone is reduced then you can have diabetes insipidus so this is called by the name of diabetes insipidus now when you have diabetes insipidus which is due to the pituitary cause due to a cause which is there in the brain you call it as the central diabetes insipidus central diabetes insipidus right you can also have this because of any defect in the kidney where this adh is not acting adh is secreted yes but it is not able to act in the kidney so it is a problem of kidney so that is called as nephrogenic diabetes insipidus nephrogenic something that is coming out of a problem in the kidney but this is a central diabetes insipidus you have a problem in the very secretion of uh, adh in the pituitary so this is central diabetes insipidus adrenal gland which option will be thyroid will be graves disease isn't it graves disease exophthalmic goiter can be produced by that there is an increase in this is of uh, thyroid hormone and your metabolism will increase heart rate will increase everything will increase you will have palpitations heart rate and if you know, ex excessive heart rate is there and uh, you are extremely active, then the eyes will bulge out and all those things can be made over there and you can have even tremors because of Graves' disease. It is an excessive uh, synthesis and secretion of hormones by the thyroid gland. It is hyperactive. Now, adrenal gland, obviously it goes to the Addison's disease. Why? Yeah, aldosterone. Aldosterone, isn't it? Mineral or corticoid. Aldosterone. Yes. Uh, the zona glomerulosa of adrenal gland is affected. So, obviously, A will go to 3. How many options? These two are ruled out. Then I have B to 1. So, only one option is remaining here. So, answer for this question is option number 2. Let's proceed to the next question. Now, this is a concept which is uh, there with respect to the topic of uh, kidney, isn't it? So, yeah, we are supposed to prevent diuresis understand what is meant by diuresis. Diuresis means loss of water from human body. So, loss of salt and water from the body is called by the name of diuresis. Loss of salt and water. Now, how it is lost? How is it lost? It is lost in urine. So, let's talk about the options now. Reabsorption of sodium from and water from the renal tubules by aldosterone. So, aldosterone is synthesized by the zona glomerulosa. Right? So what happens is whenever there is an aldosterone action, so this will act on the distal convoluted tubule and once there is an action due to that, then the water and sodium will be taken away from the nephron. So there is very less water available to be thrown out of the body as urine. So therefore, this is obviously working out. Will it prevent diuresis? Yes, it will. So my answer for this question is option number one. But let's go to the other options also. Atrial natriuretic factor C. The point is, whenever you are having uh, increased BP, there is a 
uh, ready in okay angiotensinogen and losterone pathway the ras pathway is activated right and this prevents diuresis so therefore you can say that this is a wrong option because atrial natriuretic factor is against the ras okay it is to counteract the effect of ras decrease in secretion of renin by gg cells no this is not an option why when renin is increased only then there will be retention of water in the body or resorption of sodium and water from renal tubules now if you are decreasing synthesis of renin then this is not possible more and water more water reabsorption okay due to under secretion of adh no adh has to be increasingly synthesized only then it will retain water so this is also a wrong option so that is why this is the correct answer for this question a conceptual question which requires a good uh, crunch on the topic of uh, renin angiotensinogen and aldosterone mechanism and all those mineral mineralocorticoid which is aldosterone as well as the adh so yeah this is my explanation for this question and question number 67 it is such an important question we have been seeing this question a lot of times coming in the in all exams that you can think about meiotic division of the secondary oocyte see primary oocyte undergoes the first meiotic division to form the secondary oocyte and the first polar body right it was arrested somewhere i i do agree with that but the secondary uh, oocyte is formed over there and that will again undergo the second meiotic division it is uh, it is actually arrested in the metaphase and then it is ovulating and this goes into the ampullary isthmic junction where it is going to be fertilized and only during the time of fertilization this particular secondary oocyte meiotic division that is second meiotic division is completed so completion of meiotic division specifically the second second meiotic division is completed at the time of fusion of the sperm with the ovum so this is the correct answer for this question this has appeared in all practice tests no matter whichever institute you are following they will definitely give you this question it is there in the textbook also so yeah this is such an important question that you are supposed to know and they have directly asked this question now yes gregarious polyphagous pest locusta locust isn't it locust is the gregarious pest radial symmetry adult with radial symmetry larva with bilateral symmetry this particular one that is asterias starfish isn't it book lungs and bioluminescence so obviously uh, i will have to go with bioluminescence will go into the uh, obviously uh, tenoplana is it a tenoplana is the bioluminescence growing organism book lungs are there with scorpion so for this question the correct answer for this question is option number one in this particular code and yes i will be marking this right just me check this out a to four b to one C22, yes, book lens. Everything is directly taken from NCRT. There is no doubt in this. Next question now. See, this is another good question, which is from the topic of locomotion and movement, but this time they are asking the question on the topic of uh, skeletal system of human body. Right, guys. So, floating ribs. So, we have uh, three types of ribs, isn't it? Yeah. So, floating ribs are your 11th and 12th ribs. Normally, a rib comes from the uh, I mean the vertebral column. So one end of the rib, the posterior end of the rib or the dorsal end of the rib, I mean back end of the rib is actually attached to the this vertebral column and vertebrae and it comes all the way to the front side and it will be attaching onto the capilla. Okay. So first seven will be attaching directly, eight, nine, ten will be attaching to the seventh and the eleventh and twelfth will not reach, it will not reach the scapula. I mean not scapular sternum it will not reach to the anterior surface it will not reach out to the front side so it will be ending in the back side itself it will be ending in the dorsal side itself so you call them as by call them by the name of floating ribs or you can even call it by the name of renal ribs because when you take the kidney uh, it is actually related to these kind of ribs so it is very in close proximity to the kidney on both sides you call this as the renal ribs so yes it does not connect with the sternum so this is my answer and only one option is matching here okay let's go to this acromion acromion is a process of scapula right you have a scapula like this it's a triangular structure like this and this is how it looks and on the dorsal side if i am looking from my back side there is a small extension like this this is called as the spine of scapula so this is the spine of scapula the spinous process and this ends as a you know a flattened region this is called by the name of acromion okay 
and here in this particular area you can see a small cavity like this and this cavity is called by the name of the glenoid cavity glenoid cavity and it is into this glenoid cavity your head of the humerus humerus is somewhat like this so this is the head of the humerus okay so this will attach into the cavity so this is the ball glenoid cavity is a socket so that's it now glenoid cavity head of the humerus is attached to it scapula uh, yes acromion is attached into the clav clavicle see acromioclavicular joint so this will come back and from here the clavicle ex ex is extending and it joins with the acromion okay so from the other side your clavicle is coming here and this attaches to the acromion here so this is my clavicle now what is the importance of clavicle and acromion is attaching see, see this is like a roof isn't it so this forms a v-shaped arch over here clavicle on the front side acromion on the back side and the spine over here spine of the scapula over here this kind of an arch will prevent the dislocation of humerus and see if this kind of an arch is not here then this humerus is just attached over here isn't it so it can go up to prevent it from going up you have this clavicle and acromion coming like this so your humerus is somewhere like this and your clavicle and acromion is like this so this will prevent the humerus from going upside so that is the important point over here scapula is located between the second to seventh rib where on the back side so this is my answer for this question so yeah option is three just by one option the first option itself i got the answer as option number three so they have made it extremely easier this year so the competition will be too much that's the problem in question number 71 this is another question from the topic of uh, uh, the biotechnology and its applications isn't it so this time there are a lot of questions that they have asked from the topic of biotechnology so yeah biotechnology is the star of this year it seems bt cotton bacillus thuringiensis that is the reason for this bt bt isn't, isn't it yeah why do they make this to prevent the infestation by insects damage to the crops by insect pest that was another question adenosine deaminase deficiency you can have severe acute uh, i mean ada deficiency isn't it so, uh, yes this is one of the very important disease that they can ask you and it is cured by gene therapy right okay so the next one is rna interference we have discussed we uh, get a lot of discussions about rna interference and the mechanism of RNA interference is also very important and this time they are just asking you what is the use of this as a cellular defense and we have harnessed the process in making a lot of things and PCR why do you use PCR detection of HIV infection even the coronavirus is actually uh, detected with the help of RT-PCR isn't it so it is again a polymerase chain reaction so you make a lot of copies of HIV that particular DNA and then you will analyze this so that is called by the name of PCR polymerase chain reaction we have to learn it in detail the steps denaturation annealing and extension and with their temperature which is required for each of them so the correct answer for this question is again option fourth just if you know this BT cotton it goes to bacillus thuringiensis then that means only one option is option fourth over here so the next question is from the topic of origin of life and evolution of life see this Miller's experiment so yeah when I was sitting in my class my teacher used to uh, tell us not just to read it and by heart this but just to appreciate the level of patience this particular Sir Miller might have had the work experience he used to have and the way he has made everything so yes many a times it would, it would have been very difficult for him to conduct such an exper exper experiment in that primitive era when science is not that much fully developed isn't it so yeah human curiosity has led to the development of everything that we have today even the way that i'm speaking to you now this particular medium is also something that is formed due to extensive human uh, experiments experimentation and development so Stanley L. Miller produced an amino acid uh, produced amino acids by mixing the following in a closed flask. Here the first point is methane, hydrogen, and ammonia are there. Okay. Remember water vapor also. Now temperature is very important. It is directly given in the textbook. It is 800 degrees Celsius. No matter how much you know about this, this temperature can make you land up in trouble. But remember it is 800 degrees Celsius. And if you have read the textbook very well, you will directly get option four as your answer. 
So my answer for this question is option fourth. Let's go to the next one. Another question from the topic of uh, biotechnology. Again, they have asked this particular bacillus thuringiensis here. So it has cry proteins. Thermus aquaticus, you produce this tag polymerase. Tag polymerase is important, isn't it? So yeah, so this is DNA polymerase. Now agrobacterium, agrobacterium to be efficient. So that is the cloning vector. And option D is salmonella typhimurium, construction of the first RNA, RDNA molecule. So this is obviously um, A will go to 4. So this is the option here. So answer for this question is option number 1. Again a good question from the topic of biotechnology and remembering uh, things in biotechnology is very important this year. Biotechnology, biotechnology is the star of this year. See this again they are asking a question on bacillus thuringiensis. So in three questions they have mentioned this particular term itself. Isn't it? Why do you require this? To prevent the insect pest. So the answer for this question is option 4. I don't think I need, I need to give you any further explanation for this. It's a directly given NCRT question and you might have seen this in your practice test that you might have written for the preparation of this exam. Now another question. Uh, again polymerase, ligase, so we can consider this as the topic from biotechnology principles and processes. Polymerase, what does it do? It doesn't break, it doesn't break. It will you know polymerize the formation of a DNA. Now nucleases separate the two strands of DNA. No, exonucleases makes cut at specific positions within the DNA. No, exonuclease is at the both end of the DNA. What makes cuts inside the DNA is obviously endonucleases. Now the point is ligases here. See ligases join the two DNA molecules. It's a correct statement. So I'll be going with option number four for this question. This is a fairly easy question. You might get the question within no time and if you want to rule out the option you can do that also. Now see, make match the following columns and select the correct option. So again a question from body fluids and circulation. So there was a good boost up for the topics like uh, you know cardiac cycle and all those things. This time they asked a question from ECG and that's all. Now take a look at this question. Eosinophils, what does it do? It will actually uh, let's go to that at the end. Now basophils will actually release histamine heparin, isn't it? So basophil is the most important feature over here. Now, yeah, it releases histamine. So this is going to release histamine. So yeah, it releases granules containing histamine. Eosinophils will release histaminase. So this is an important question. So A will go to 3 and B will go to 4. Now neutrophils, what does it do? It will phagocytose and lymphocytes it will have immune response mediation. So this is again, this is the option. It is based on the very basic functions of each of these kind of cells, WBC types, isn't it? Neutrophils are very small cells. It will start phagocytosing and your monocytes will, you know, gulp big, big phagocytose body. So this is big, big bodies are phagocytosed by monocyte and small, small are done by neutrophils. Lymphocytes are the primary immune, I mean, immune response mediators, B cells and T cells, obviously. So the correct answer for this question is option number four. Here the point to remember is eosinophils will release histaminase, basophils will, re will release histamine. So that's uh, an important point to remember here. Uh, here glycosidic bond should be there and in the second one peptide bond should be there, isn't it? Glycerol, no. Trypsin has peptide bond. So this is not my option. Tryp trypsin has peptide bond but glycerol is not, a, it's an organic compound. So it does not have this glycosidic bond, no. Cellulose, okay. Lecithin, not okay. Uh, inulin is a polymer of fructose. It is the smallest polymer you can see. And insulin is a protein. So obviously this is the correct answer here. Inulin is a polymer of fructose. So therefore glycosidic bond will be there. Insulin is a protein, a hormone. So therefore there will be peptide bond. Chitin, no. A cholesterol is not having peptide bond. So therefore this option is not correct. Yeah, so the correct answer for this question is option 3. Now this is a fairly easy question from the topic of uh, human reproduction. Placenta, what does it do? Human chorionic gonadotropin, layer of ovum, lubrication of venous and androgen. So therefore, this will secrete human chorionic gonadotropin. That is why you have this particular urine pregnancy test, isn't it? So you are going to test 
whether the female is uh, pregnant or not with the help of this particular hcg if you can detect this then you can do that okay bulbourethral glands it will lubrication of the penis is the point here so the point to remember here is that hmm the point to remember here is that uh, this is analogous to something called by the name of cowper's glands in female Ladic cells will secrete the androgens, testosterone, okay, and it is stimulated by LH. Now the point is zona pellucida, it is just a layer of ovum, right, and after fertilization only this zona pellucida will be released, and after fertilization before implantation the zona will be released, and the zona will be dissolved, and this is called by the name of zonal hatching. Now the point is, to just to find out which is the correct option, D will go to 1, uh, A will go to 2, so only one option here. This is answer is option number third. Now see this question. See organ of cortai, cochlea, eustachian tube and stapes. Eustachian tubus function is to connect the ear with the nasopharynx so as to maintain the pressure difference between the on both sides of the tympanic membrane. So this is going to this option. Stapes is attached to the oval window, isn't it? Malleus, incus, stapes. These are the three ear ossicles. Malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane. The handle of malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane. It is connected to the incus, then it is connected to the stapes. Stapes is attached to the cochlea, oval window of cochlea. That's it. Cochlea is the coiled part of the labyrinth. It's a direct NCRT question. You see, all these things are directly given in NCRT. Organ of cotti, what does it have? It is attached to the basilar membrane. So if you talk about the cochlea itself, if you take the cross section here, you have a resinous membrane and a basilar membrane here. So on this particular basilar membrane, you have this organ of cotti and on top of this, you have this particular tectorial membrane. So obviously this is located on basilar membrane. Now A will go to 4, only one option here. B will go to 2, C will go to 1 and D will go to 3. So this is my answer for this question. Now most abundant protein in animals. No doubt at all, answer is collagen. It's a direct question from NCRT. Let us talk about this question now. Glucagon is associated with hypoglycemia. No. See, when glucagon is synthesized in the body, it will increase the blood sugar levels and that causes hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia. So this is a wrong option. Insulin acts on pancreatic cells and adipocytes. It does act on adipocytes. Okay. Now, does it act on pancreatic cells? See, pancreatic cells are releasing insulin. So we don't have to go with this option as of now. Insulin is associated with hyperglycemia. No, see, they have just messed up with this. Insulin is associated with hypoglycemia. And glucagon is with hyperglycemia. See, whenever you are having insulin, it removes the blood glucose and it is stored in the liver as glycogen. Or it is required for the cells to take up, take up the uh, glucose from the blood. So it is associated with hypoglycemia. Now, this is a correct statement. Glucocorticoid stimulates gluconeogenesis. So new glucose is formed from the glycogen which is stored in the liver. So obviously you can say option number fourth is a correct statement here. See. People take steroids for certain diseases now. We say that steroids are associated with a lot of side effects. Now, what are the steroids that you take? A lot of steroids are there in the market. Now, all those things are actually glucocorticoids only. Like uh, your cortisol, isn't it? So what happens here is that when there are many side effects associated with the steroid use, you can have cataract, you can have glaucoma, you can have a uh, Cushing syndrome and this kind of uh, fish moon like fishies can be developed over there. Then you can have central obesity, right? A lot of ob the females, if they take it, they become a lot of, uh, they become more obese and they have, they can get a buffalo hump. See when people take uh, glucocorticoids, that uh, portion of the body just below the neck can just project out as a hump. So many things are there which are associated with glucocorticoids as side effects. And one of the important side effects is diabetes. They can directly, they can, this is a risk factor for getting diabetes. They can, uh, they are actually going to increase the amount of glucose in their blood. So once you test the blood glucose, you will see that the blood glucose is elevated. It is high. So that is obviously diabetes mellitus. So yes, it stimulates gluconeogenesis. Okay, so I hope all questions have been covered here. So with that, I am winding up the discussion for the zoology paper. 
of this i have not taken into account any kind of ecology questions i consider that as a botany topic as such but i have focused more on the topics of human physiology in this in this particular discussion so it was not possible for me to discuss the 100% of the paper like from top to bottom everything cannot be done because i am only seeing a uh, one person and you know to make a video it requires so much of effort and this itself required hours and efforts of uh, hours of effort to make this kind of a video possible so let's go to the discussion of physics in a separate video and with that we'll wind up the discussion of all the questions that were asked in the year 2020 so this was a fairly easy paper as such and every questions were from ncrt only so there can be full marks in biology this year itself that's obvious right okay thank you